Oh, morning, Trainiacs. Just trying to channel my inner Annie Haug. I was watching a video of her running in Kona the other day, and damn, it's snappy, it's responsive, there's energy return. It looks easy, it's upright, it's balanced, and uh, there's a lot that we can learn from there. There's a lot of feelings that while we might not be able to run like Annie Howe, there's a lot of small little sensations and gear and shoe selection that I think we can take from her and we're gonna go through that. Whoa, cool jump. Mountain bikers are way cooler than triathletes. So, Trainiacs, Annie Haug. Annie Hug, I believe it is more closely pronounced. She is obviously one of the best runners in triathlon. The reason that I think that she might be the best runner in triathlon is because of the structure and the technique that she brings to the run. It's simple and more importantly, it is efficient. That is a huge thing for triathlon. Something that we outline in triathlon running foundations, plug, plug, is that triathlon running is very different from typical running. In traditional running, when you're on a track, when you're looking for the most speed that you can possibly get, you are starting fresh and you are finishing completely gassed. Well, you still do that in triathlon, but you start in triathlon at a detrimental point where basically you're running on fumes the entire way. So the more that you can conserve energy, the more efficient you can make your running form, the better you're going to do. Look at Alistair Brownlee, for example, probably the best Olympic distance 5 and 10k short distance runner that there's ever been, but he comes into Ironman distance racing and he's kind of average, especially when you're in the heat of Kona and efficiency makes such a huge difference. Track style running has a really big arm drive, uses up a ton of muscles. It's got a really big butt kick in the leg, uses up a ton of energy. Whereas triathlon running, a much smaller movement. And I think Annie Haug has developed with, I believe his name, moniker is Running Wolf. He's a German run coach who coaches Annie Haug. Patrick Lange and our pal Seb, who we roomed with at Challenge Roth last year, this very efficient energy saving technique. And let's just kind of go through some of the things that you can easily adopt. So we've got a couple of clips here of Annie at Kona. And one of the first things that I want you to notice here is what's going on in her upper body. Quite often what goes on in the upper body, in the shoulders and in the arms actually drives what happens in the lower body. You can make all of the changes that you want to your foot strike, but if your upper body isn't agreeing with that, it's not going to be translated as efficiently as it needs to be. And one of the things that I can see from Annie Haug, from Patrick Lange, is their shoulder carry. Let's just play this actually. If you look at their shoulder carry, it's a little bit high. What they actually do is instead of have this real low, super big arm carry here, they take that shoulder plane and they essentially just raise it like just a tiny little bit. And what I'm talking about here isn't like this and it's not locking it out. What it is is it's just a slight activation and you're still keeping your arm at a nice pendulum here, but it's just a slight activation. And what that's going to do is it's going to basically lock in your arms into a more restricted motion. That doesn't mean that it's going to be completely restricted. Look at Annie Haug and she is using those arms. You want to use those arms towards the end of a race. You want to be able to pump them you want to be able to use those arms to drive the turnover in your foot when your legs are getting tired. But at the same time, you wanna conserve energy. And that point right back here that we just showed, you can see perfectly how her shoulders are just, just slightly activated. And go back to that clip of her in the last five miles at Kona. This is the last mile at Kona. You can see that 
she had those shoulders nice up activated and it allowed the arms to still move really well but it conserved a little bit of energy. So that's one thing that we recommend is that you just activate those shoulders just slightly, creating that nice pendulum here, but limiting the movement a little bit. The next thing that I want to look at is the concept of this forward lean. And this is what people I think get fairly, yeah, well, I'll say a lot of run zealots online have this concept of you have to lean forward and let the lean forward do the work for your body. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. And some of the best runners in the world obviously don't. So take a look at Annie here from the side, right there. That is a perfect example of how there is no forward lean. Draw a line from her shoulder down to her hip and it's not quite leaning back but it's, I would say it's like basically perfectly stacked. Does that look like a forward lean? No, we can take a look at some footage of Patrick Lunger running when I went and just, I didn't do a workout with him, but I watched him do a workout right before Kona. And you can see that he too is very upright. He's stacked. That forward lean, I think ends up creating a lot of pounding in the lower body. It's gonna put all of the load on a joint, on a pivot point, if you lean forward too much. So what I would focus on is, actually, you know what? Here, I'll show you a drill. So this running drill to help you figure out where that center of gravity directly underneath your body is, is it's really simple. I've talked about it before. What you have to do is just bounce in place. And what you're gonna notice is that you're gonna land directly underneath your center of mass. You're not gonna land out front, you're gonna land right underneath you. Then, what you do is start doing butt kicks. That gives you the same sense of where you should be putting the majority of your weight. And then just start leaning forward. And that lean forward is gonna give you a sense of where you should have that foot underneath your body. So what you're looking at doing is doing basically an upright run, no lean forward, no lean back, let your body absorb the pounding that is occurring during the run. This is going to allow you to be efficient, to not spend all of your energy keeping yourself upright at this pivot point hinge because you're leaning over or you're spending all your energy trying to lean forward. Very, very good if you're a track athlete, you need to be as fast as possible, but we need to slow down as little as possible as triathletes. The next thing that I want to show from that same angle is the landing point. And one thing that has been, well, I think effectively debunked, but there's still a fair amount of, I think, misconception about landing on your heel, landing on your midfoot, landing on your forefoot. There's two things that I want to show you with Annie here. First thing is that she has a, we'll go to the slow motion part here where we can see it really, really well. She has, if you think that you have to land on your midfoot to be a good runner, well, that sure looks like she's landing on her heel there. And what about the next foot strike? Well, that sure looks like she's landing on her heel there. And again, and again. And we can even look at similar run footage of Patrick Lange, same sort of thing. He's landing on his heel. The reason for this is that it's been shown in the lab that landing on your heel, if it's natural for you, I mean, if you land on your toe or your midfoot, don't try to be a heel striker, but if you land on your heel at anything slower than a six minute kilometer, you're actually going to be more efficient. You're going to save energy. What's more important is that you don't put the vast majority of your weight on your heel when it's out front of you. And if we, again, let's go back and look at Annie here, it's called more of a heel touch than a heel land. And this is where you just graze the ground out front with your heel, but you don't actually put the vast majority of your weight on it until it's underneath your body. And that's what we see with a slightly outstretched leg, that means that her weight isn't necessarily on it. Go forward and right there, that is where 
she's loading her foot. So boom, perfectly vertical right underneath. So don't stress about landing on your heel or your midfoot or your forefoot. You wanna make sure that more than anything, when your body starts bearing weight, it is under your center of gravity. It's underneath your body. And again, that's going to allow your musculoskeletal system to end up absorbing all of that stress. Now, the final thing that I wanna show, and we can see this in all of these pictures. Now, Patrick Lange has this. Jan Ferdino has this. Annie Haug has this, like some of the best pure, really pretty runners in the field. They've got this kind of like a, a foot flick and this is run turnover here. This is the perfect example of it. There's a lot of energy return. She spends a very small amount of time on the ground. And this is something that is really significantly different between pros and age groupers. Age groupers tend to have a lot of ground contact time. You land, there's a lot of time spent on the ground and then you've got to spend a lot of energy pulling up. Whereas Jan Ferdino, Patrick Lange, they tend to come up and flick. It's almost like an instant flick. One thing that's very much gonna help with that is if you do races with a Nike Vaporfly 4%, a Next% percent, the Alpha Fly I haven't tried. These are all designed to get you off the ground really, really quick. Next thing that I would recommend is, like we did today, go out on a trail run and focus on quick foot turnover. That combination of a slow run because you're on a trail with the ground being softer and wanting to absorb your foot, but focusing on getting up off the ground quicker, that's gonna help you get off the ground quicker when you're on pavement. You can also start doing some plyometrics. Plyometrics are gonna build that elastic energy that, sure, we might not be Annie Haug level or Patrick Longa level or Jan Ferdino level, but if we build up a little bit more elastic energy where the body loads and just gets you off the ground, snaps you off the ground quickly, you're gonna be better for it. And then the last thing is, I wanna show you just something to have in mind here. Now this foot flick that everyone seems to have is thinking about it this way. This is what I find will help you. Think of yourself as floating up a little bit off the ground. Instead of landing and collapsing with your heel, just feel like you're floating off the ground and your hips aren't collapsing at all. Your hips are staying at the same level all the time. And then as you land, instead of thinking that you're going like this and coming down, you're thinking about, it's almost like, it's kind of almost like how, how a horse will go like this. So as you come in, you're instantly coming up and you're flicking your foot. And what you're going to find is as you start running and you're feeling more comfortable that way, you will land almost pointed with your toe downwards a little bit. And this is going to encourage that better landing position and quickly getting off the ground. Think of yourself as grazing the ground and doing a tiny little flick, like you are flicking gum off your shoe. And if you think about that, that's gonna help you get off the ground quicker. So that's that, Trainiacs. I mean, there is nothing that is specific to Annie Haug's running stride that I want to say you have to do that. Everyone's running stride is very unique, but those principles of the shoulders up, of not necessarily a forward lean, but just being nice and upright, having that quick flick off the ground, maybe getting some shoes when you're doing the longer distance races like a half Ironman or an Ironman that encourage that quick flick off the ground and thinking about flicking gum off your shoe. These are things that regardless of whether you are knock kneed, you are bow kneed, you are pigeon toed, these are principles that anyone can apply that are gonna be beneficial to you. She's a great runner and hopefully this helps you out. If you like that running content, this over here is currently our most popular running video. And if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.